we're going to be looking at a bunch of free books today. My name is Willow, and I am the resident goblin and the host of the RPG Goblin. And today we are going to be delving into a bunch of these really cool free books that I got recently when I went up to my favorite game shop in Ohio. And the owner actually gave me all of these books um, since he had a bunch of leftover stock from free RPG day. And so I took them and... I want to share them with you because these are really awesome games. Uh, first thing, we're going to start out with the Avatar RPG. Now, if you have not heard of this and you're a big fan of Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, then where have you been? <laughs> but about this game, because it is a game from the publisher Magpie Studios, uh, which are fantastic publishers. I love some of the other games that they've done, such as Masks of the New Generation and Root. But this is one of their more recent games, and it is amazing. I have yet to play it, but I got this quick start, obviously, from Free RPG Day, and it is fantastic. You can pick the different eras that you play your RPG game in, such as the Kyoshi era, the Roku era, the Hundred Year War era, uh, Aang era, and the Korra era as well. I had to remember if that one was in, in here or not. This one is actually set in the Korra era and has a pre-written adventure in it along with pre-generated characters, which I have to say I love the character sheets for this game. They're just really, really pretty. Like, here's a better look. Because this is a Powered by the Apocalypse game, a lot of the mechanics are done through moves, and it's very narrative-centric. So if you are a fan of really crunchy games that deal with a lot of mechanics and keeping a lot of things and juggling a lot of things at once, you probably won't like this game as much. But I would still recommend trying it out because I think testing out different games is always a good way to see what you will like. Uh, but quick start, which again is really good. Uh, I think the Movers and Shakers is the name of the adventure. Uh, I also got these two little D6s. Now let's see if I can actually get these in focus. Maybe. They're so cute and the font on the numbers is really adorable and with the game and Powered by the Apocalypse and the Avatar RPG uses a 2d6 system. So this is enough dice to play the entire game. Plus, they're so cute. I love them so much. And they do also match, again, the character sheet. I love this game. It's so, so cool. Now, I could probably delve into all of the information and all of the different parts of this quick start, but that's not what today's video is about so we must move on now we're gonna go with another one that i was really excited about avatar and this game as soon as i saw them in the box i'm like yep those two are coming home with me for sure <laughs> but i am a huge huge fan of all of free league publishing's game i am a big fan of all of free league's publishing's games and this is no exception and this is again is a really really new game for them and is I think people are just starting to get their copies of it. And it is Dragon Bane. This is so cool. This is also a quick start, which means it has a short run through of the rules and a adventure. And also, again, pre-generated characters with really cool sheets. Uh, but Dragon Bane is actually an old Swedish game that Free League got uh, licensed to to revamp it to the modern era. And... It's so cool. It is a fantasy game. It's along the lines of things like D&D and Pathfinder, uh, except it doesn't have that level of crunch to it. It is quite light on the rules from what I can see with looking at this quick start. And it does, though, follow a D20 system, which means, you know, you use a D20 for all of your rolls, and then there are additional dice for, like, damage and things like that. So it is similar to D&D in that way. So if you love D&D, this wouldn't be far off from what you're used to and would be really fun to play because it's just a really cool fantasy adventure. Except, you know, fantasy adventure, love it. Um, the one thing about most of Free League's games is they are incredibly deadly and Dragonbane is not an exception. Uh, 
part of the introduction to this is that combat should always be approached of is this worth it? Because it is a very, very high chance that you will die if you are not ready for the combat that you are going to go into. I just think that's really cool. I think that that approach that Free League has taken with a lot of their games with it being so deadly is really interesting. Though, if you don't like your characters dying, this may not be Free League and their games may not be the game for you, or you just might need to adjust it to be a little less deadly. But I love Dragon. I love what I've seen of Dragon Bane so far. There's been some amazing people out there that have recorded their own playthroughs of using the quick start, and I cannot wait to get to play it myself. Uh, another thing that I want to share is there is a kin, which are basically the equivalent of D&D races in Dragon Bane called Mallard. They're angry ducks. I love them. They're so cute. I want to be an angry duck so bad. <laughs> but this is just an absolutely fascinating quick start. And I've already read through most of it uh, as I was road tripping down. And I 100% recommend it. Uh, again, this is one of the few that I was like, yeah, this is coming home with me immediately. Plus, I again, I love all of Free League's games. So, which on the topic of Free League, uh, when I was at the game store, my brother actually decided to get some gifts for his boyfriend and me and my friend who were also at the store with him. And so I got to pick out something for myself and I ended up getting dice. I love dice so much. Dice make me happy. And these dice make me very, very happy as they're from Vason. Uh, these are like the official Vason dice that Free League did. And they're just normal D6s, except they're just really pretty. They've got this really fun dot design with then the six being kind of this spiral that looks really, really awesome. And what I love is that Vason is a D6 dice pool game. And so it gives you a nice variety, gives you six D6s to work with. Plus the box is adorable. It's such a vibe and actually I got my own copy of Vason here which is gorgeous and it matches with this little container with the dice and I love it so much again Vason's a fantastic game if you want gothic horror like hunting down monsters in Nordic countries primarily like kind of based in Sweden You'd love Basin. It's so good. Again, quite deadly, but the creativity of like trying to figure out how to kill these Basin, it's amazing. And I know this was about free books, but you know, I got free dice. So shout out to Basin for being an amazing game. Uh, <laughs> but let's put those aside and continue on our free RPG train. We're going to move to Vampire the Masquerade next, which... Apologies for the reflections. Uh, we're going to move to this one next, as I am quite familiar with Vampire the Masquerade. I actually did an episode about it, which I absolutely loved, and I've had a need to play that game since that episode, yet I've had no chance to, and I think that's a crime. But <laughs> uh, Vampire the Masquerade is this really, really amazing game that is social intrigue along with political intrigue about being a vampire and kind of dealing with these clans that are set out um, in the vampire world and they're at war with each other and the different clans are different and then you have to survive being a vampire and have to feed and all of that it's just this amazing game uh, that really explores like human stories about being a monster it's insane but it's amazing and so when i saw that there was a vampire the masquerade module had to grab it uh first off the art in vampire the masquerade is so fantastic it's got these bright lights and just like such a beautifully eerie vibe to the entire thing so this module is about this blood that's being rumored around called Cherry Moon that is supposed to be insanely desirable, very tasty, and everyone is wanting a taste or how to find it or just get their hands on it. And it follows what you will do with this knowledge of Cherry Moon and whether you will feed into the hunger and find it yourself. And I just think that's a really, really amazing concept. And apparently this should be good for a one-shot adventure, which is really good. And 
I think that these types of pre-written modules that are pretty short, meant for maybe a session or three, is a fantastic way to try out a game for the first time. So I really have my eyes on running this uh, when I try Vampire the Masquerade for the first time because it would make my life easier. I don't have to learn exactly how to run the entire game as a GM or in the case of Vampire the Masquerade, a storyteller, and know how to run it before I can really create my own story, I could just take this and try it out for the first time and see how I like the game. So I think this is an amazing module. I would love to look through it more and see more of what the story is and even try running it for myself. So if you've never seen the Vampire Masquerade book before, it is gorgeous. Uh, if I do say so myself, and it is really a fantastic game. If that kind of political social intrigue is something that really interests you and those stories about being this monster and struggling with your own humanity, then you should really play Vampire the Masquerade because it is exactly that through and through. And plus it's a dice pool game, which means that you just get to have a bunch of D tens that you roll with and it feels good to roll a lot of dice. So Try out by Empire of the Masquerade. Next is Animal Adventures. There we go. <laughs> Next is Animal Adventures. Now, this is a simplified D&D 5e game. It's basically taken the classes and the mechanics of D&D and makes it simpler to play. Uh, very suitable for younger kids or if you just want to introduce people into TTRPGs or D&D, it makes it a little easier to learn. Uh, and it's about playing these cats and dogs that are going on their own adventures. And it's really, really cute. And I actually have the starter set for this that my brother got me for Christmas one year. That comes with a bunch of these little minis and an adventure itself. But off topic, this adventure is part of like an expansion book that they are going to be coming out with that is around like the sea and kind of this ocean vibe to it. And it's really, really cute. This one's very shiny, but it's really adorable. And like I said, this is a module. This isn't a quick start, so it doesn't go over any rules or anything in the book itself. It just gives you the information that you need to run this story, which is a little unfortunate because uh, with The Vampire the Masquerade, that is a module book, but it has pre-generated characters in it. Uh, with this game, uh, when I'm looking through it, I don't see any pre-generated characters, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to run for yourself if you just have this book. Now, luckily for me, I actually have, like I said, the quick start, and I also have the book for Animal Adventures, like the source book for it. So I can go through and play this game and create characters with my friends and get them all set up just fine. But if you don't have that information, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to play. It does still give you this pre-written adventure that you can, you know, try out the game for yourself and see if you like it. Uh, you just might have to see if they have any pre-generated characters online first. <laughs> And actually, um, as I'm looking through this right now, what's really cool about Animal Adventures is the fact that you can play dogs and cats, but there's actually different options for playing a dog as a warlock and a cat as a warlock. So instead of like there being like these subclasses and all of that, it's just these differences of a cat warlock. You know, what does that give you? And it gives you more cat centric abilities, like one of being uh, catnap. Uh, cat warlocks can use their power to send their enemies into a deep slumber. You can cast sleep at a first level spell. And so it's like cute little things like that. That's like this flavoring for being these animals and the differences between the two as well. Then you have the Dog Warlock, uh, Fey Friend. You can call upon the haunting pack of your patron. You may use Find Familiar once per long rest without requiring material components, summoning a creature equal to your Warlock level. Regardless of the creature's type you summon, its appearance is a smaller version of your own canine appearance, although it retains the abilities of the creature type you call upon. So you can basically just summon another smaller dog of you as a dog. Dog warlock and then as the cat you get to put people to sleep 
Both are really cool and useful abilities, but they're flavored differently because you're a cat or a dog. I don't know. I just think that's really cute. I definitely recommend this game. This is a really good uh, starter set to get. It comes with pre-generated characters, a pre-written adventure. Uh, it comes with little miniatures that are absolutely adorable and tokens and all of that. So if you're looking for something to get one of your TTRPG friends for Christmas or for a birthday, or if you're looking to run something for uh, kids or some younger um, players, then Animal Adventures, I absolutely recommend. When I started to play TTRPGs, I started with D&D 5th edition. And when I was really into that, I didn't know about a lot of other TTRPGs other than Pathfinder. And that's been one I've really wanted to try for a long time. And so when I saw there was a Pathfinder module, I grabbed that up really quick because I really want to attempt to run a game of Pathfinder and see the differences between D&D 5th edition, Pathfinder 2nd edition, and kind of compare it. But because Pathfinder is a little bit more crunchy than D&D 5th edition is, uh, I was a little nervous about running it for the first time, just, you know, my own adventure. Uh, when I don't really know about the rules too much and I don't really know how to formulate the encounters and it would take a lot of reading to be able to do that which I don't mind doing but when they come out with something like a module that you can just run off the bat and it sets out everything story-wise, everything mechanic-wise when it comes to stat blocks, those are less things that you have to worry about and you can just kind of worry about the small things of like oh is this the right rule and just kind of following along with the adventure and learning as you go versus trying to learn everything in uh, before time and then running something and still needing to learn as you're running it. Uh, the great thing, this also comes with pre-generated characters, so it makes it a lot easier to run for your group to just to try out one time. I believe it's for fourth level characters though which is a little bit of a problem because if you've played things like D&D, it can be a little difficult as your first time to kind of go straight into a higher level character when you don't have the time to get used to those abilities as you're leveling up and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So this might not be the perfect um, starting adventure. Uh, I would, again, recommend the starter set for Pathfinder over this if you want to try it for the first time, but I do love the fact that they have this and I would probably still run it myself even though I haven't played because it does have those pre-generated characters and it has everything set up for you in a way to make it less difficult to learn. So I appreciate that and I just think the whole idea for the adventure um, is really cute. It's, it's called a few, f Oop. it's called a few flowers more Okay, so the module is, this adventure takes a band of Leshy heroes, which I think Leshy is the right way to say it, I'm not sure, uh, into the depths of a forest and pits them against supernatural threats uh, that are literally out of this world, which sounds insanely cool. Uh, would love to be able to play this. Apparently this is a sequel to a module that they've done before. So I guess um, if you got the first one, this would be a really good way to expand on that adventure. Uh, but if not, I still think this is a great way to test it out. And I'm really excited to try and play it for myself because Pathfinder has been one I really wanted to try out for a while. And kind of on the same track, Starfinder. Star <laughs> Starfinder. <laughs> We love reflections. Um, Starfinder though. This one I get a little probably too excited about. Starfinder I've been really wanting to try. It's this basically sci-fi fantasy uh, version of Pathfinder uh, set in the same universe uh, with actually the world of Pathfinder, uh, the world that Pathfinder set in, in that universe. But that isn't the focus as there is so many other places to go and so many other things to be. And so Pathfinder is amazing, but Starfinder is also insanely cool. Uh, I've read through quite a lot of the rule book and there's a lot of amazing character options and it's just been something that's really sparked my interest. And so I saw that there was this module for Starfinder and had to grab it, Operation Seaside Park. 
that sounds like a fantastic time. I want to go to a seaside park. But apparently, um, when a derelict ship infested with dangerous hostile aliens comes crashing into an amusement park in the heart of the packed worlds, it's up to the heroes to protect their planet from the worst the swarm has to offer. I want to fight crazy I want to fight crazy aliens in a freaking mint park please that sounds like the fantastic time so actually where I grew up and the town that the comic book shop that I actually got these um books from is in a city that has one of the most popular amusement parks in the world specifically it's it's a lot of roller coasters. It's not just like a carnival type thing. It is an actual park that has all of these amazing roller coasters that have broken world records and all of that. So like having this adventure that's about like aliens crashing into an amusement park and fighting against them just really gets to me because yeah, I want to defend my amusement park from aliens, please. That would be fantastic. Uh, but I think that's just really cool. I love the idea for this adventure. And again, this is one I would really, really want to play and run for my friends. Um, I'm not sure, though, what level this adventure is at. So doing a little bit of reading. This is for third level characters, which isn't bad. Um, again, it's like, you know, fourth level for Pathfinder, third level for this. So a little bit higher characters. That's usually where you start gaining a little bit of ground in your build. So it's not a bad level to start. Can be a little less um, accessible to beginner players, but I think if you just kind of take your time learning the rules as you're playing, uh, it shouldn't be terrible. Uh, this is also meant for being a one shot, which is a great way as well to get introduced into these games. So I'm actually really excited to check this out and play it. Um, it also included a bunch of maps in the book itself. I'm so sorry for the reflections. It's, it's a little terrible when some of these books are really, really shiny. Uh, but yeah, this is the, this is the Operation Seaside Park. It's a really, really awesome concept. I really want to try and run it um, now. It's a really awesome concept and I really, really want to run it. So let's hope that I can get a group together. Okay, so we are going to start to get into some of the books and games that I'm not as familiar with. Um, starting it off is Dungeon Crawl Classics, which is a game that I've heard really, really good things about from a lot of people. So I'm excited to actually get into this game uh, further. But uh, this is actually just a module, so it doesn't have any pre-generated characters or quick start rules. So I'm still not sure the specifics of the game, but I know that it is an OSR, I believe, which is a genre of TTRPGs that is basically bringing back the feel of like old school D&D &D, where things are really brutal and it's against the players and or the characters not the players well maybe a little against the players I don't know but uh it's a it's more brutal and it has just that more classic renaissance feel to the game itself uh, again, I've heard amazing things about a lot of OSR games and Dungeon Crawl Classics is really no different, um, but it is a module. Can't really play it uh, very well because I don't have the books to create characters, but I may end up getting them if this adventure looks really fun. Uh, and it seems like you are actually running through a dungeon uh, just from some of the art here. Looks really, really cool. Uh, I'll definitely have to take a much better look at this because it looks very, very cool. Uh, the kind of idea for the adventure is the clock is ticking. The demon's eye is... The clock is ticking. The demon's eye is a vault which appears only once every 10 years. And you are in the right place at the right time. If your wits, spells, and sword arm are strong enough to survive its deadly traps, there is more wealth here than you can ever carry. But beware, centuries ago, the old serpent was imprisoned beyond outside. 
and now waits for foolish mortals to provide the key to its release. Others have fallen before you. Will you join them or will your party succeed in piercing the demon's eye? So, yeah, no, this is like going through a really cool, like old school kind of uh, dungeon where there's traps and an evil serpent and it's reliant on your skills and your wits and your spells and all of that. It's just honestly really cool to see games that take that old school feel and bring it again into the modern era with how the mechanics for these games also work, which again, I don't know a lot about. Dungeon Crawl Classics mechanics yet. Well, one day. <laughs> All right. Next game that we are doing, which is one I've heard before, but I know pretty much nothing about other than it's like a sword and sorcery type game, is Swords of Serpentine, which I love the cover of this. It looks so pretty, just like that beautiful blue purple night sky i love it gives me like disney vibes almost uh but this is called swords and serpentine and uh this book specifically is a module but it actually looks to be more of a quick start as it gives an overview of the rules beforehand um which i really appreciate like i said before um and these a little bit into some of the abilities that follow this game, which I love. Uh, it also has a section on GM advice, which is fantastic, even if it's just a small module that's supposed to be played for one to three sessions. Giving some advice to the GM on how to run it is a really good way to make the game even more accessible. So love that so much. Uh, the actual story itself... So the story for this module is, in losing face, the hero's friend Galdo brings them a shocking discovery, an unconscious woman with a blank, with blank skin where her face should be. Who is she and why is she significant? And more importantly, why did someone or something do this to her? What are they planning? And I just think that's a really cool idea for like a module to start something off. Ooh, they even have art. Of the woman. Oh god, that's really cool. That's slightly terrifying, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Swords and Serpentine is a game about daring heroism and sly politics and bloody savagery. It's all of these different things. Uh, it's got like that sword and sorcery, sorcery feel, and it looks to be a really interesting game. Uh, quite a bit of like political intrigue or intrigue of some kind with this whole like storyline with the losing face uh which i find to be really cool i always enjoy those political or i enjoy ttrpgs that bring in those political and social aspects a lot and it seems like this game does that i hope <laughs> at least from the way that it it describes itself i think that's really awesome and it's got pre-generated characters with really cool sheets. Yeah, I have no idea what system this runs off of. So if you know, um, let me know in the comments because I'm really curious now. I'm guessing it it could be D20. I might be wrong. <laughs> but that's sword and Ser that's swords and serpentine. I would really, really like to delve into that more and find out more about the base game itself. Plus running that story seems to be really cool as well so that might be another one that i add to my bracket of hey guys you want to play this game <laughs> so the next game that we are doing is legend of the five rings now i've heard this game just a little bit and i'll be honest i thought for a little bit that it was a lord of the rings game for a while uh, due to the rings part. So, you know, that's that's foolish on my end, but <laughs> I didn't actually know that much about it until I got it um, with this free RPG day stuff and found out it's actually seems to be almost this samurai type game, which is really, really cool. And that makes me want to explore this uh, game a lot further and see what options there are with playing the characters and what kinds of stories it suggests uh, for you to play and all of the little things. But this is actually a adventure module uh, for this game. 
uh, that is about basically, it seems from the little description on the back, uh, fighting against this great storm eel, which sounds amazing. I, I don't know all of the details other than, um, you know, it's the region's on the cusp of c catastrophe and the Empire needs you. So take up your blade, pray to the spirits and prepare to take on the storm and storm's eels rest. That sounds cool. <laughs> I, I think that um, a lot of these games have some really interesting stories that they set up for their modules. And I love seeing just how different they are. And this one just fighting this like storm eel. That sounds amazing. Storm eel is these like samurais. Fantastic. Uh, though the one thing with this game is it's actually uh, based off of the D&D 5e system. Uh, so when you look at the character sheets here, when you look at the character sheets there, uh, they might look a little familiar because they're basically just the D&D 5e sheets with the six scores and then like the uh, saving throws and the skills and proficiencies and all of that. Which makes me really curious what they did to change that system and to change um, how it works to better fit their setting and what kind of stories it seems like it wants you to play in. With, and if I'm correct, the samurai um, feel to most of the class, or I shouldn't say classes, because I actually don't know if there's really classes in this game. But I'd love to know what they bring to the game to make it interesting and to make it different and to fit the story and the ideas that they have presented. So this one's another one I have to delve into a bit more and try and understand, but it seems to be really, really interesting. And I'd love to look into the actual like core book and figure out how this game works and how it's different. Uh, plus, I also really like the cover art. I, I like them for, I like it for most of these things. So I just need to point it out. <laughs> All right, so we're to the last of the larger um, books that I have. And this last one is called Zombie Side. Um, free RPG Day 2, apparently. Um, so Zombie Side uh, from the back of the book is apparently a actual role playing game, uh, Zombie Side Chronicles. But this is actually just two missions uh, for this game. So this is similar to like an adventure module. Um, or a quick start uh, where it just gives you that information and it's not the actual game, <laughs> uh, the game book itself. Uh, I don't think it goes over the rules much in the actual game, but it does give you two options for these missions. And they're called Car Crash and Oliver Twisted, I believe. So those are some interesting names. The one thing is that it doesn't have any pre-generated characters. So it's going to be another situation where you have to either see if there's any online or if you can find a way to pre-generate characters because they don't have them in this game. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what the mechanics are and how the game works, but at least the setup for these adventures, um, the setup for these missions seem really interesting. Uh, I actually do like the art in this where it's like, oh, look, that's like a little map that they did. And oh, a chainsaw. I don't know. It's really cool. Uh, so this one, I don't have a ton to say, but it looks really, really awesome. Plus, it seems like a zombie killing game. Those are usually pretty fun, though. I haven't actually played a zombie killing TTRPG yet. Um, I know that Free League actually came out with like the walk or had uh, a Kickstarter for the Walking Dead TTRPG that they're doing, which looked really good. And then... Uh, I there's one that I got forever ago that's an indie RPG that I can't remember the name of that looked really good uh, but I've never actually played a zombie killing TTRPG that's kind of meant for that zombie apocalypse feel your survivors blah 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 so maybe that should go on the list okay continuing on uh, we are to these small books and I have three of these to show the first one that we'll start off with is this little pocket RPG guide, which is basically, uh, apparently it's 5e compatible. That's funny. Uh, 
and it goes over like five pro tips for being a GM, um, random tables, and some guides to like create three dimensional characters, which I actually really like. Um, the fact that they're like giving you that information. Uh, some of the stuff in the guides is like choose a trope, add motivation, uh, uh, contradict yourself, and all of these different things, which are good ideas when it comes to creating a character that you want to be dynamic and that you want to be very interesting. Uh, but these are this is actually some really good things for trying to create a character that's dynamic and three-dimensional and that's different from other characters that you've played before. So this is a really small little booklet, uh, only like a few pages, but if you have this or can find something like this, it's really good to look through. And uh, some of the GM advice I like, um, uh, like, don't forget to improvise. <laughs> uh, remember your role. Run, run a session zero. That's really good advice, especially for any new GMs out there. Always run a session zero before you play a game so that you can set expectations with your players on what you're going to be doing in this game. It's a really, really good thing that you need to do. I totally recommend it. I have the two campaigns that I'm right now running. The first one I didn't have a proper session zero for, that's my D&D campaign, and because we didn't have a session zero, there's been some flaws in the game itself where we don't really know, like our expectations, even though we were on the same track, didn't really match up very well. And so we're having to struggle through trying to trying to overcome that shortcoming of not having those session zero, that then when I decided to run my Monster of the Week campaign, I made sure to have a session zero to have everyone be on the same page and make sure everyone's okay with the idea that we're going with. Because I'm never doing that again that I did with my first campaign uh, with D&D. Because it's just really painful to try and work out those things in game versus you can just get it out of the way before you even start the campaign. So always run a session zero. It's really helpful for both the GM, the players, and the story. Um, but <laughs> little mini rant aside, this, which actually uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce Lope, Lope, Garu, Garu. I don't know. I'm really bad at saying things. So if I'm pronouncing any words wrong, I apologize. Um, it's just not something I'm very good at. But this is actually, from what I have can tell from looking through this book, this is a solo, like, choose-your-own-adventure-type RPG where you are becoming a werewolf. And I think that's really, really cool. Uh, if your first transformation doesn't kill you, then the hunters who vowed to cleanse the world of your kind surely will. Not to mention the unforeseen dangers that will threaten you around every corner. So it's just about becoming a werewolf and having to deal with all of the dangers and everything that comes with it. And that's really amazing. And apparently it's got a skill tree. That's really cool. Is this person? And this is just a free preview of this story. So it doesn't go through the whole thing. And apparently this person has a ton of of these uh, kind of solo novel adventures uh, with this game being one of them and you can get the actual full game. And there seems to be like some pirate ones and all of that. Uh, Graphic Novel Adventures is the name of kind of this uh, book series, uh, aka GNA. So this is really, really cool. I'm definitely going to look into some of these actual books, but the free preview looks amazing. Um, here's some of the... Here's some of the art inside. It looks really cool. Uh, I'll definitely be looking through this more because you get to turn into a werewolf. That's really awesome. And I love solo RPGs that aren't just writing games, even though those are extremely fun. Some of these choose your own adventure ones are also really interesting and are a little less taxing to play all the time because you don't have to write everything out. Okay, we are finally on the last item that I got and it is level up one. 
Now, this is very vague, and I wasn't sure what this was actually in the box. And the um, game store owner just said, here, take it. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm so glad I did, because this is a indie RPG anthology book. And basically, it is an assortment of a bunch of different small, simple, easy RPGs that you can just play. And they're done by a bunch of different authors that contributed to this book. And I think it's so freaking cool. Um, so far, I've, I've gone through some of the games. Um, the first one, I'm not going to be talking about all of the games in this book because I want you to be able to check it out because I think this should be available to get, I hope. It's by Ninth Level Games. And uh, I actually really want to see if I can get some of the previous editions of this because this is just a really neat idea. But uh, one of the games in this is called Daiquiris and Drunk Girls. And it is a game where you are a part of a bachelorette party and trying to get as drunk as possible and not get kicked out of the bar. It's a really cool idea and like really, really goofy. And if you've, if you've heard of things like Honey Heist, it is kind of that same idea where it's like this really simple concept, like, oh, get as drunk as possible in this game or in Honey Heist where you're supposed to steal the honey from the honey convention. It's like that simple idea that makes for these perfect, like short term one shot games that are really easy to run because all you need for this is like maybe a, a piece of paper to keep track of like the points that you're getting and a D6. And that's all you need to play this game. So it's very, very low effort and low prep because you're just kind of making it all up as you go. And this uh, is also a GM-less game too. So every single person's going to be a player. No one's going to be a GM. No one's going to be controlling the story. Everyone gets to participate and kind of collaborat collaboratively make it together, which I think is fantastic. Another one I really like that's also GM-less is Filling an Empty Breath which is a game about a burial gone wrong and the person coming back to life as a zombie. And the whole thing is trying to lay that person back to rest peacefully by, um, by basically answering these questions and building this relationship and making uh, each of you creating a eulogy for this person that died and seeing if you can lay them properly to rest and it's honestly an amazing game. It's really cool. I loved reading through it. And it's just a few pages. And again, this is another one that is pretty low effort where you just need a die, a pen, paper, and some like real life physical gifts. But it could be like snacks <laughs> or like rocks and things like that. So it's you don't even have to get anything specific or expensive. And I think that's just really sweet because it plays into the actual game itself. Uh, but I do appreciate uh, in this book, they make these little spreads um, for the beginning of the game to kind of give you an idea of what it's going to be about. So this one's strange and serious and good for like two plus players, no GM and rated for like 13 plus and some of these other uh i really enjoyed this rating system because it makes it really easy to just kind of flip through the book and be like oh this one would be really good to play uh like this uh the daiquiris and drunk girls is mature audience and it's rate and it's genre is fun like it gives you an idea of what the game's going to be about before actually needing to read it and i just really appreciate that and they've got tons of games in this book. So if you like to run one shots for your gaming group, um, that book is like the perfect thing. And even if you're wanting to introduce some younger people into TTRPGs, that's also a really good book and kind of good games to get started doing that with. So I really want to play through it. And I want to play through like a bunch of these games and try them out and all of that because they look fantastic. But I think that we are at the end of kind of this walkthrough of all of the free books that I got. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around and watching. Uh, I might end up going through and exploring some of these games and books more just by themselves. But uh, that will be another time. And let me know if you actually want that. <laughs>
But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and and go buy some TTRPGs because you deserve to play a game. <laughs>